Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, this is the last spotlight session for the evening. Um, three minutes for all the spotlight speakers, and please visit their posters at the end. Hi, uh, my name is Jamie Morgenstern. I'll be talking about the pseudo dimension of nearly optimal auctions. This work is joint with Tim Rothgarden from Stanford. Uh, so the problem we study in this paper uh, is the problem of designing an auction for selling a single item in a setting where you're trying to maximize the amount of money from doing so. This problem is well understood in the setting where buyers are assumed to be drawn from some product distribution which is known to the auction designer up front. Uh, and it's even possible to get revenue guarantees in a setting where you assume nothing uh, of the sort of that buyers may be coming from some distribution or in, and are instead worst case. Uh, although the guarantees are obviously much weaker in such a setting. More recently, uh, a number of pieces of work have studied the problem assuming buyers are drawn from some product distribution, which is not explicitly known to the auction designer. And instead, the auction designer has some small number of samples from that distribution, and from those samples aims to design an auction which works well on a future draw from that distribution. Much of this work uh, focuses on choosing a specific cl class of auctions and showing that it is simple enough uh, that a small, namely polynomial, sample size is sufficient to approximately optimize for revenue. Uh, our work, on the other hand, uh, looks for a specific definition of simplicity, and in this case we propose the use of pseudo dimension, which is just a real val valued analog of VC dimension, of a class of auctions. And for free, once you've shown that a class is sufficiently simple or has sufficiently small pseudo dimension, one gets sample complexity guarantees for revenue maximization over that class of auctions. Uh, and this allows one to balance the trade-off between optimality in terms of revenue guarantees uh, and both the complexity and sample complexity of a class of auctions. Uh, the main technical contribution of this work is showing that there exists a class of auctions with polynomial pseudo dimension, uh, and that class actually has an auction in it which is approximately optimal in terms of revenue. Uh, this has two interpretations, one of which is that C has small sample complexity, right? So with a polynomial sample, one actually gets good generalization error, small generalization error, uh, and also that there's good representation error, that the class actually contains a good auction. Great. Thanks. Come see me at my poster. Um, hello, I'm Felipe Tovar. Uh, this is joint work with Tang Boy and Richard Turner. Uh, we, are, we are presenting a generative model for time series consisting uh, of the convolution between a white noise process and a continuous time linear filter. Um, this model is, is well known and it's been around um, because it arises in many branches of science and engineering. And the reason is so f is, is this model is so flexible um, is because once we condition on the filter, or once we fix this filter arbitrarily, the resulting signal, FT, this, um, this function here, becomes a Gaussian process with an ar arbitrarily defined uh, covariance function, which is here. So our contribution is to place a Gaussian process prior on this filter, which in turn induces a non-parametric distribution over the covariance function of the, of the resulting ga Gaussian process. Um, this sounds great, but as we all know, uh, great models come with a great inference uh, intractabilities. And in our case, uh, there are three main challenges. Um, inference in our setting means finding the, the processes uh, H and X. And the first problem is that X is a white noise process, so it only behaves well, well inside the integral. The second intractability comes from the fact that H and X are multiplying one another. Uh, and the third one uh, comes from the non-parametric structure of these processes. Uh, we're going to overcome this, um, uh, these challenges by using an approximate variational inference setting where we're going to find the approximate posterior of a finite set of variables that encapsulate the dynamic of these uh, two processes, H and, e and, and X, in an alternative domain where they behave, behave well. Um, conditional on this finite set of samples, we are able to approximate the posterior 
over the kernel of the of the signal and uh, the power spe um, the spectral density. Um, we can see uh, very briefly some results um, the, that we gener uh, we produce with our with our model that we call the Gaussian process convolution model. Uh, the first top uh, the, fir uh, the, the top two plots um, show a true spectral mixture kernel. Um, where our model was able to recover the um, the, uh, the, the the kernel with uh, with uncertainty bars, and the bottom two boxes show a, a spectral estimation for real real world uh, data, where we used um, unevenly sampled data. The take home message is that the Gaussian process convolution model is a prior over models for time series, not directly on time series. And we have uh, many more results and things to discuss. Please uh, visit us in our poster uh, later today or in the time series workshop on Saturday. Thank you very much. Hi. My name is Jackson Gorham, and this is joint work with Lester Mackey at Stanford University. Okay. So Markov chain Monte Carlo methods are good because they allow us to do inference on problems that are very complicated and don't have a closed form way that we can do inference. So that's good. But they come with a cost. Whenever you're using an MC, MC method, you requires you that you iterate through the entire data set to generate a new sample point. So if you have a huge data set, this is just not computationally feasible. So to address this, recently uh, there's been work that has been called, or we put under the class of names, approximate MC methods with uh, subset posteriors. And if you don't know what those are, that's just a fancy way to say rather than using the whole data set in order to do the MCMC iteration, you just use a random subset of the data. So this is good because you've sped up the operation, but it's bad because now these procedures are biased. And by biased, what I mean is that the invariant distribution is no longer the target distribution that you're trying to do inference on. So how do we assess these bias variance trade-offs? What could we do? So one maybe idea that we could use is we could just pull an off-the-shelf MCMC diagnostic like ESS. Would that, would that work for us? So here's two samples that we drew from a bimodal distribution. Each came from a different approximate MCMC sampler. So if we were just to use ESS, we would choose the sample on the left, which you can see is like horribly over-dispersed for this distribution. So in our work, we developed this new practical tool called the Stein discrepancy. And in this example, it would choose the, uh, or the sample on the right, which is a far better approximation to this distribution. So what is the Stein discrepancy? This is like the infomercial part of this. So the Stein discrepancy, it's based on Stein's method, and it selects high quality samples, samplers, or even tuning parameters for your samplers. And the, pre the previous example I just showed you was for approximate MC, MC samplers, but this would work for any sampler, whether it's exact, or whether it's deterministic or whatever else. Um, it's useful for assessing the convergence rates of samplers, so we've actually used it to show that the convergence rates of something like herding is faster than the theoretical bounds that we've been able to prove thus far. And one of the cool things about this also is that you don't need to know the normalization constant for your target distribution. So we have some good theory too. Uh, we can actually qualify under what uh, properties of the target distribution. You have uh, the Stein discrepancy metricize uh, notions of convergence, like convergence in uh, distribution or the Wasserstein metric. So if any of this sounds appealing to you guys, come check it out at Poster 62. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Eun Yang from IBM Research, and uh, I'll briefly introduce our paper, Close Form Estimators for High Dimensional Generalized Linear Models. This is a joint work with Aureli Lozano at IBM and Pradeep Lavikuma at UT Austin. So in this paper, we revisit the standard problem, uh, generalized linear models that includes several different models like uh, linear regression, logistic regression, or Poisson regression models. And the only difference across different models is on the log partition function in the exponential family form and therefore in the maximum likelihood estimator. So even for a high dimensional setting, the regularized MLE is known to be working very well with respect to the statistical performance. But if our problem is really huge or the target low dimensional structure is like very complicated, like low rank matrix regression parameter, then this regularized MLE becomes uh, stati uh, sorry, computationally very expensive. So the goal of our paper is to provide a closed form analytic solution 
for high dimensional GLM that is computationally extremely uh, efficient as well as statistically strong. So we start from the stationary condition of unregularized MLE, but it's obvious that we cannot have a closed form uh, expression for the regularized uh, regression parameter theta from this stationary condition because the optimization problem, unregularized MLE, is not well defined or not uniquely defined for the high dimensional sampling regime. Uh, actually, in the paper, we found some uh, two main issues in the construction of the closed form and proposed some approximations uh, for these bottlenecks. Uh, but of course, we have to be very careful uh, for the statistical guarantees. What happened here? So, um, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, we have a closed form expression now from the slightly modified or slightly relaxed stationary condition of unregularized MLE. And uh, finally, to encourage the low dimensional structure on our estimation, we perform very simple operations like element wise soft thresholding for the sparse, uh, sparsity case, for instance. So moreover, we also uh, show that this kind of construction can, can guarantee the statistical, strong statistical consistency across, uh, in terms of different uh, error norms. So uh, yes, that's it. So if you want to know the further details on our construction, uh, please come to our poster. That's the poster ID 85. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andrew Wilson, a postdoc in the machine learning department at CMU. I'm presenting the human kernel, which is joint work with Christoph Dan, Christopher Lucas, and Eric Singh. I'll be at poster 24 tonight. Truly intelligent systems should be able to learn and make decisions without human intervention. Yet, humans can easily solve many generalization problems that are very difficult even for the most advanced machine learning approaches. Consider, for example, the figure on the left in panel A. We humans can easily generalize this sawtooth pattern, which is illustrated in black. Various human extrapolations are illustrated here in purple. However, Gaussian processes, even with quite advanced kernel learning approaches, produce the rather unconvincing extrapolations shown in blue in panel B. In our paper, we learn human kernels, which encapsulate human function learning biases. We use these kernels to produce human-like predictions on a variety of problems and also to gain new psychological insights about human function learning. In panel C, we use the human kernel to produce the extrapolations shown in purple, which are essentially indistinguishable from the genuine human extrapolations in panel A on the left. We were very interested in our human participants. We explored how humans progressively learn about various function classes. We often found that what they didn't learn was more revealing about their prior biases than how they did adapt their new representations. We also considered how humans perform model selection over infinitely many choices. We compared to Gaussian process-based model selection, which can surprisingly be biased towards underfitting, towards oversimplicity. Our interactive experiments are available at www.functionlearning.com and everyone here is welcome to participate and provide even more human data. You can find me at poster 24 tonight and I would look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Yuan Jun from Columbia University, and this is a joint work with Lars Buesing, Krishna Shenoy, and my PhD advisor, John Cunningham. Our paper proposes a linear dynamical system model for high dimensional point process data that captures the under dispersion and over dispersion of the data. So the data we analyze is neural spec train data, which is represented as a high dimensional time series uh, data with count observation. So uh, we observed that the spiking activity exhibits strong under dispersion, namely the variance of the uh, spike counts is smaller than the mean of the spike counts. This is in inconsistent with the common Poisson assumption. 
uh, to proceed, uh, we introduce a general count distribution family that generalizes the Poisson distribution and captures as special cases many other common count data distributions. Uh, our uh, a while, a while maintaining an exponential family form. So our distribution has a parameter g that controls the dispersion of the data. Coupled with a classical linear dynamical system model, we are able to perform dimension reduction while accounting for the dispersion of the data. Uh, we develop efficient uh, variational based EM algorithm to fit the model, and we show that our model gives significant performance improvements on real data as compared to the Poisson counterparts. If you're interested in a, a flexible count data model, uh, come see our poster number uh, 26. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Jonathan. Uh, this is a joint uh, work with uh, Andrew Isaac Mezzo and Laurent Perrinet from INT in Marseille, and my advisor Gabriel Perret from Paris Dauphine. Uh, the paper introduces a biologically motivated uh, generative model of dynamic textures crafted for uh, probing visual perception. It comes with a, uh, with a psychophysical experiment as a proof of concept. Uh, our algorithm generates dynamic Gaussian texture parameterized by distribution of three classical parameters tested in visual neuroscience and psychophysics, uh, namely the spatial frequency orientation and speed. On the slide, you can see four examples of texture with uh, different distribution of the parameters. These distributions are linked to the observer's motion with, res with, respect, to, uh, uh, with respect to its motion. Uh, moreover, we also propose a fast real-time texture synthesis based on stochastic partial differential equations. It allows the experimenter to generate the stimulation on the fly without the need uh, of pre-computation or storage. Uh, we use this model in a two alternative forcage choice experiment in which we test the effect of spatial frequency on speed perception. A uh, second trial of the experiment consists in the presentation of two consecutive stimuli, stimuli with different spatial frequency and speed. The subject is asked which, which of the two stimuli was perceived faster. To analyze the obtained data, uh, we propose a statistical model based on inverse Bayesian inference. Using a Bayesian observer model is a powerful approach to, to explain biases in uh, human decision-making processes. In this Bayesian model, the observer is assumed to estimate speed using a maximum a posteriori estimator with a likelihood based on simulation and an internal prior. Such a model allows a computation of the psychometric curve and the estimation of the observer's parameter based on the, the classical uh, psychometric clue, uh, namely the point of subjective equality and the slope at that point. Uh, <clears throat> we explain a simple method to relate uh, the, the recorded psychometric curve uh, with our Bayesian uh, model and thus provide a solution uh, for the inverse Bayesian uh, problem. Under various conditions, we observe a positive effect of spatial frequency over uh, uh, speed increment. Such an effect could be explained by a change in prior slope. I would be pleased to offer you more explanation. Uh, it's poster uh, 14. Thank you. Uh, so good evening. Uh, my, my name is Piyush Rai. I'm from IIT Kanpur, and this is joint work with Cheng Wei Hu, Ricardo Henao, and Lawrence Karin from the Duke University. So this paper is about a new Bayesian approach for doing multi-label learning. So what multi-label learning is? So basically, given an object with features, uh, in the goal in multi-label learning is to predict a label vector, which is binary. Each element is a binary uh, value. Uh, and uh, the, each element basically tells us about the presence or absence of a label 
uh, from a large label vocabulary. Uh, so in this work, we are focusing on this, uh, this problem, of, uh, so-called problem of extreme multi-label learning, where the number of labels could be massive, and consequently, the, number, uh, the size of the label matrix in the training data could be very massive, and at the same time, the label matrix can be highly sparse. So in this work, we are proposing a fully Bayesian model for doing extreme uh, multi-label learning. And our approach is based on doing a low rank embedding of the label matrix. Uh, so uh, in this work, we are treating the multi-label problem uh, learning as a topic model uh, uh, learning problem. So uh, the way this model works is that we assume that each label can be treated as a word and each, uh, and there's, uh, each label vector, which is basically an L-dimensional binary uh, vector, so that can be assumed to be generated as a combination of a set of k latent topics. Each topic itself is a distribution over the labels. And the combination weights of uh, these topics will depend on the features of, of the given example. Uh, our model is fully Bayesian, and at the same time, it's conjugate. It has full local conjugacy, which allows us to develop a f very efficient Gibbs sampling as well as VB or EM inference algorithms. Uh, another key aspect of our, of our model is that learning uh, the model scales in the number of non-zeros in the label matrix, which is very uh, nice because many of the um, extreme learning, uh, multi-label learning problems have very massive but highly sparse label matrices. Uh, another key aspect of our model is that at test time, uh, you don't have to infer the combination weights, and the test time prediction for the test example can be done in a closed form. So for more details, uh, please visit our poster. Our poster ID is 17. Thank you. So this is the uh, close of the afternoon sessions. Let's thank all the speakers one more time. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.